Sakuna real. Yo, what it do fam? It's your boy Momo Senpai on Anime Talk. Ryoman Sakuna, the man, the myth, the legend, the king of curses and demonic giga chat himself. We know him and love him, but what if we don't actually know him? What if the events of Jujutsu Kaisen are only half of the story and the rest of it took place in the real world? Not a lot of people know that Sakuna was based on an ancient Japanese myth, which may have been based on an actual historical figure. There's a possibility that the 2D Sakuna had a 3D counterpart, and his mummified remains might actually be hidden somewhere around Japan. Let's get into it. None of this will be new to you, but I'll speed run through this in case you forgot. Sakuna in the JJK universe is the charismatic villain who possesses Yuji Itadori after he eats one of Sakuna's mummified fingers. He was once a powerful sorcerer, but became a cursed spirit with four arms and two faces after his human life ended. The best way to sum up his character is that he's an overpowered villain that's too dope to hate. Ryoman Sakuna in Japanese mythology is a bit different. According to the Nihon Shoki or Nihonji, which is a long ass book cataloging Japanese myths and history, Sakuna was a man from the Haida province in Gifu prefecture with four arms, four legs, and two faces. Each arm of his had a weapon. Forget dual wielding, the dude was a quad wielding maniac. He wasn't a fan of the MP imperial leadership and ran around ruining people's days by scamming, stealing, and stabbing. For a long time, he got away with it because he was so sharp-witted and agile. The emperor sent a warrior to kill him. The warrior was successful, and his story in Nihonji seems to end there. So, to recap, here are the obvious surface-level similarities. Abnormal amount of limbs, two faces, smart, strong, fast, and known to slice and dice his opponents. Pretty much unanimously considered to be an asshole, a talented asshole but an asshole nonetheless. But the rabbit hole goes deeper than that. Sakuna's domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, is in the style of an ancient Japanese Buddhist temple adorned in skulls. This isn't just a casual nod to Japanese mythology and architecture, or just something that looks cool. There are real, actual temples dedicated to Sakuna. Like, you could hop on a plane and go there right now type real. A lot of Jujutsu Kaisen fans are already doing that, and the monks are in favor of it. So that's nice. Nihonji isn't really an unbiased source. Everything in it is skewed in the favor of the Japanese Empire. Winston Churchill didn't just pull the same. History is written by the victors out of nowhere. So if you went back to the year 377 and asked a random Japanese royal what they thought about Sakuna, they probably relentlessly roast him and pray for his downfall. But if you went to the Gifu prefecture and asked about him, a random villager would be more likely to say, yo, I love that dude. Different parts of Japan have different legends about him mainly from Gifu, where he's said to have been born. In some places, he was just some dude who died in battle against an imperial warrior. He wasn't a demon, and he wasn't evil. He was literally just some guy that got demonized in Nanhanji for refusing to swear allegiance to the imperial family. It's bad optics for the imperial family to include the murder of an innocent guy in the history books, so it makes sense. In one area of Gifu, he's said to have brought Buddhism to the people, and he was regarded as a god. There's a temple there to prove it. Zen Kyuji Temple even has a statue of Sakuna in there. He doesn't have the characteristic extra arms, but it's definitely him. He's considered a patron of the Senkoji Temple too, and there are some dope statues there as well. Different areas of Gifu agree that he was a hero to them, but don't agree on the magnitude of the heroism. Some legends say he did have those extra arms and faces, and he used them to protect the people. Some stories even say he defeated a dragon to protect a village. When you do something as badass as slay a dragon, obviously people are going to want to celebrate that. And that's why the Nichi Ryu Buji Temple was built. It's got a statue of Sakuna with the ideal amount of arms in it. Manashi Shrine is another real world location said to be related to Sakuna. It's in Haida Province, the home of Sakuna, and it doesn't have a publicly known enshrined deity. Every shrine has to have a deity, so the theory is that Ryoma Sakuna is worshipped here on the low. So because there are so many actual temples and shrines in Sakuna's honor, it's only logical that his domain expansion fits the same thing. It's all a word of mouth tradition, but it's hard to tell what's mythology and what's actual history. When you take all of it into account, maybe Sakuna wasn't so bad after all. Just because he had beef with the Japanese Empire doesn't make him a bad dude. He could be a hero to the local people and a villain to the elite. So far, he sounds like a Robin Hood type of figure who may or may not have had extra arms and faces. So where does the human jerky part of Jujutsu Kaisen come into play? There's no hard source for this, just urban legend. But there are tales about a mummified Sakuna bringing death and destruction wherever his corpse is brought to. There's not anything about chomping off fingers, but it still tracks. Legend has it that a wooden box was unearthed by some dude in an old temple during the destruction phase of remodeling. The temple master said, hey, don't mess with that. The other construction guys opened it anyway and found a shriveled up mummy with two faces and four arms inside. Obviously, those guys got cursed King Tut style, and one of them even died. The guy who found the box initially did some asking around and was told that a cult collected people with deformity, kept them locked up with no food, and mummified the last survivor. The last survivor was named Ryoman Sakuna. 
and his mummy was used as a source of power for the cult. His mummy was moved around, and natural disasters were said to occur wherever his body ended up. When the cult died out, bad stuff stopped happening, until a crew of dumbasses opened the box, and apparently the mummy was lost, and is out there somewhere waiting for someone to unearth it and release that cursed power. Morbid stuff. Legend or not, reality can get morbid too. Polymelia is a birth defect where a human is born with extra limbs. Usually the limbs are kind of tiny and useless, so in modern times, they get amputated and the person can live a normal life. It's rare, but possible for a human to be born with fully functional extra arms. And if someone was born like that in ancient Japan, they just have to live with it. Safe amputation wouldn't have been an option. You gotta put those extra arms to good use. Sure, you could use them for boring labor, but it's much cooler to become a a warrior. Sometimes polymelia is caused by a conjoined twin getting absorbed by the other, leaving the surviving twin with extra limbs. But you may not just end up with an extra set of arms. by a small part and have most of their own organ. An incomplete conjoined twin or a parasitic twin are kind of just the leftover parts of an incomplete twin. You know carrying a parasitic twin? That could be true. So the condition could explain a human having extra arms and an extra face. Like with the extra arms in modern times, it's usually removed. Again, not an option in ancient Japan. The chances of survival for this condition don't really look great, but it's totally possible. Some believe that Sakuna's story is symbolically linked to twins and brothers. No pun intended. There are several legends of twins, also in the Nihon Shoki. So there's a definite theme going on. In one of them, a guy kills his brother, and some things happen. I'm gonna give myself an aneurysm if I keep trying to pull information out of a poorly translated ancient Japanese text. So just trust me on that. Twins and duality is definitely a major motif of Japanese mythology. To top it off, the name Ryoma Sakuna is full of symbolism too, and ties all this together, kinda. Ryo equals both. Men equals face, mask, or surface. Yado, shuka can mean home, hotel, or any other sort of lodging. Also can mean to be pregnant. <laughs> nah, literally exorcism, to drive out evil spirits. The kanji making of Ryomen means both plus face, mask, or surface. So super obvious what it means. Both mask, two faces, something along those lines. Ryomen could be figurative symbolizing that he was a complex dude or very polarizing to different groups. Or it could be literal and point to him being a conjoined twin. Sakuna is a bit more difficult to figure out. Hotel exorcism? Was Sakuna exorcised or did he do the exorcism mean? Could be a villain or a hero. But pregnancy exorcism? Could pregnancy exorcism refer to Ryoman Sakuna being a conjoined twin that partially absorbed his siblings in the womb? This kanji trips me up because it's based around the symbol for roof, but it could be a building roof or a human roof, like a womb. I don't know, man. I only got two arms, and they hurt from reaching so hard. But if that's the right interpretation, it's another point for Team Conjoined Twins. If he actually had extra arms and two faces due to carrying an incomplete conjoined twin, maybe he had double the brain power too, which is why he was regarded as highly intelligent, even by the people who hated him. So it's entirely possible that Sakuna from JJK could have been a real forearm, two-faced person, as his history got passed on from town to town, switched up a bit each time and changed for political purposes before being documented in the Nihon Shoki. He ended up becoming a larger-than-life myth, a myth that inspired one of the most badass characters ever. And maybe 3D, dead for 2,000 years, Sakuna's mummified body really is somewhere out there, waiting for some pink-haired idiot to take a bite out of it. Curse powers? Not guaranteed.